Before the very word dinosaur existed, people were already uncovering their remains. It took the discovery of several remarkable animals before paleontologists realized they were dealing with something entirely new, a group of reptiles unlike anything alive today. Among those trailblazing discoveries was Iguanodon. Chosen for the extinction within the Jurassic World family of parks, Iguanodon represents both science and wonder. It is one of the first dinosaurs ever described, standing proudly alongside Megalosaurus and Hyliosaurus as the very foundation of Dinosauria. With a signature thumb spike, powerful jaws, and the ability to shift from walking on two legs to four, it is a species instantly recognizable to experts and newcomers alike. But the reason for its inclusion go far beyond appearance. Iguanodon is known from dozens of skeletons and some of the most complete bone beds in paleontology. These discoveries have given researchers unparalleled insight into how this dinosaur lived, moved, and interacted with its environment. It has also held a special place in the public imagination for nearly two centuries, acting as a benchmark of our changing perceptions, from lumbering Victorian giant to stiff-tailed reptile to the agile and dynamic creature we know today. In this exclusive feature, we'll explore Iguanodon's paleontological profile, uncover the science behind its discovery and behavior, trace its role within the Jurassic Park franchise, and finally reveal how our team has reimagined its world as a living exhibit for guests to experience. Whether you're a potential visitor or a park manager seeking inspiration to improve your own Iwadadon enclosure, we hope this video will inspire you to witness these magnificent animals for yourself at one of our Jurassic World destinations. From Isla Nublar in San Diego to Cascadia, Manchester, Frida, or Sanctuary. By bringing Iguanodon back, Jurassic World honors both the history of science and the enduring legacy of one of the world's most iconic dinosaurs. Now that we understand why Iguanodon has earned its place amongst our living collection, let's take a closer look at the animal itself. Its size, its anatomy, and the features that makes it one of the most extraordinary herbivores of the early Cretaceous. Iguanodon lived during the early Cretaceous, between 126 and 122 million years ago, across what is now Belgium, Germany, England, and Spain. First named in 1825 by English geologist Gideon Mantell, Iguanodon was the second dinosaur ever formally described following Megalosaurus. This genus belongs to the larger group known as Iguanodontia, a branch of ornithopods that would later give rise to the duckbill hadrosaurs. Within this clade, Iguanodon lent its name to one of the most diverse and successful lineages of herbivorous dinosaurs, including relatives like Dryosaurus, Camptosaurus, and Uranosaurus. While its taxonomy has seen many revisions over the years, today only two species of Iguanodon are recognized as valid. Most famously, Iguanodon bernisontensis, known from dozens of nearly complete skeletons in Belgium. Physically, Iguanodon was a large, bulky herbivore stretching over 30 feet in length and weighing around 4.5 tons. It was capable of shifting from bipedal to quadrupedal movement, an adaptability that made it both efficient and resilient. Its most distinctive feature was a stump spike, a conical weapon originally misinterpreted as a horn on the snout. The exact function of the spike is still debated. It may have been used in self-defense, to forage, or even in interspecies disputes. Complementing this weapon was a dexterous fifth finger, likely used to manipulate branches and gather food. Other features include powerful legs with three-toed feet, a backbone and a tail stiffened by ossified tendons, and a tall but narrow skull. The jaws ended in a keratin-covered beak with teeth shaped like those of an iguana, the inspiration for the genus name. Unlike the later hadrosaurs, Iguanodon replaced its teeth one at a time rather than in massive columns, but its chewing action was still sophisticated for its era, allowing it to grind tough vegetation effectively. While once thought to have lived in herds based on the famous Bernisard bone bed, newer interpretations suggest multiple mortality events over time, possibly caused by flash floods. Other sites such as Nadane in Germany provide stronger evidence for herding, showing a wider age range of individuals preserved together. Still, there is much about Iguanodon's behavior that remains uncertain. Its thumb spikes could have served as weapons against predators or rivals, or as tools for feeding. Evidence of injuries, arthritis, and bone fractures in some specimens also reveal the stresses of life in the Cretaceous. Iguanodon was a committed herbivore, its beak crop vegetation, while its teeth ground plant matter with a chewing motion unique among reptiles. Its jaws could hold up to 29 teeth per side in the upper jaw and 25 in the lower, with replacement teeth ensuring it could process food throughout its life. Though the exact diet is unknown, it likely included horsetails, cats, conifers, and possibly the earliest flowering plants. Some paleontologists have even suggested that iguanodons helped encourage the spread of angiosperms by feeding on competing gymnosperms. 
Like most dinosaurs, Iguanodon reproduced by laying eggs. Fossil evidence is limited, but the discovery of a large bone bed indicate that it was successful in widespread genus. Its remains have been found across Europe and beyond, suggesting strong adaptability in population numbers. While its intelligence was fairly average for a dinosaur, its sensory abilities likely gave it the edge it needed to find food, avoid predators, and survive in the changing ecosystems of the early Cretaceous. Understanding what it wanted on was and how it lived is only part of the story. To truly appreciate its legacy, we must trace how this dinosaur was discovered, studied, and reimagined over nearly two centuries of paleontological history. Our story begins in the wilderness of southern England. In the early 1820s, physician and geologist Gideon Mantell collected strange bones and teeth from the quarries near Cuckfield. A popular legend credits his wife, Marianne Mantell, with spotting the first teeth. Mantell later gave conflicting accounts, but what mattered was the identification. The teeth looked strikingly like those of a modern iguana, only far larger. In 1825, Mantell named the animal Iguanodon, Iguanatooth the second dinosaur ever formally described after Megalosaurus. Early critics mistook the teeth for fish or even rhinoceros, but as experts revisited the evidence, consensus formed around a gigantic herbivorous reptile. A dramatic partial skeleton from Maidstone helped fuel the first reconstructions. Some features were right, others famously wrong, like the nose horn that later proved to be a thumb spike. Meanwhile, the rising star of British science, Sir Richard Owen, coined Dinosauria and promoted dinosaurs as advanced, mammal-like reptiles. His public vision dominated the era through the Crystal Palace sculptures with Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins, two life-size Iguanodon statues that captivated Victorian audiences and stamped the early images of dinosaurs on the public mind. Then came the discovery that rewrote the book. In 1878, miners at Bernestar, Belgium, uncovered a treasure, at least 38 individuals, many nearly complete. Louis Dallo led the study and mountings moving the horn from nose to thumb and presenting Iguanodon bernicertensis, larger, more robust, and far better known than any English remains. The dramatic standing mounts in Brussels became icons of museum displays worldwide. Conservators also pioneered methods to combat pirate disease, learning, often the hard way, how to preserve these spectacular fossils for future generations. Through the early 1900s, research slowed amid wars and economic turmoil, but work continued. New English material like I. atherfieldensis stirred away. During the dinosaur renaissance, studies by researchers such as David Weishampel and David Norman refined how Iwanodon fed and moved. Dalo's kangaroo-like posture and bent tail gave way to a more accurate, straight-tail, horizontal back animal capable of shifting between two and four legs. Finds like Dende in Germany suggested periodic mass mortalities, possibly tied to floods, and hinted at group living in some context. Because Iguanodon was named so early, many look-alike ornithopods were once tossed into the genus. Minor revisions clean house. Horns like Mantellosaurus, Beryllium, and Hypsilospinus were split out. The original type, I. anglicus, is now considered nomen dubium. Today, two species are widely recognized as valid with Iguanodon, led by I. bernicertensis, and joined by I. galvensis, named in 2015 from Spain, tightening the definition of this classic dinosaur while preserving its central role in the story of paleontology. With nearly two centuries of discovery behind it, Iguanodon emerges not just as a fossil, but as a lens on how science grows. Now, let's step into the world and ask, what kind of ecosystem shaped this animal, and how did Iguanodon shape it in return? Across the floodplains, lakes, and open woodlands of early Cretaceous Western Europe, a Iguanodon stood as a dominant medium to large herbivore, central to the energy flow of its ecosystems. Its range centered on what is now southern England and Belgium, where seasonal waterways and broadleaf understories supported vast quantities of low vegetation. The plant world was in transition. Angiosperms were beginning to spread, while gymnosperms, conifers, cycads, and ginkgos still formed the backbone of the landscape. For a high-throughput browser like Iguanodon, carpets of ferns, horsetails, and low shrubs likely made up much of the daily menu, with tougher stems cropped by keratinous beak and processed by powerful cheek teeth. Iwanodon lived alongside a familiar cast from the Wilden and neighboring deposits. Nimble ornithopods like Hypsilodophon, a lighter-built close relative Mantellosaurus, armored nodosaurus such as Pelocanthus, and long-necked theropods like Pelorosaurus. Predatory pressure varied by size class, 
small theropods such as Aristosuchus carried the littlest animals, while larger hunters, Eotyrannus, Neovenator, and the fish-eating Baryonyx patrolled rivers and floodplains. Overhead, pterosaurs shared the skies with early birds. Offshore, sharks, rays, and marine reptiles dominated marine communities. Adults, with their bulk, vigilance, and the deterrence of their thumb spike, were probably safer than juveniles and subadults. Even so, direct evidence links Iguanodontians to large predators. The gut contents of Baryonyx include fish remains and a juvenile Iguanodontian, and Iberian Baryonokines are found in close association with Iguanodontid bones. Whether these cases record scavenging or active predation, the repeated pattern suggests Iguanodon was a regular part of the local food web. Life left its marks. Injured hips, arthritic ankles, and heel fractures speak to the hazards of seasonal floods, long migrations, and the constant negotiation between predator and prey. In short, Iguanodon wasn't just present in these environments. It helped shape them, clearing pathways through vegetation, seeding new growth, and anchoring mixed-age communities across the European lowlands. We walked the floodplains and met Iguanodon in its living world. Now, let's step from the rock record into popular culture and science communication. How has Iguanodon been portrayed within the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchise, and why did our team choose to feature it across our destinations? From Victorian parks to modern cinemas, Iguanodon has shaped how the world imagines dinosaurs. In 1852, the first life-size reconstructions, then attributed to Mantelodon, considered Iguanodon at the time, rose in London's Crystal Palace. Their famous horned nose was a mystery thumb spike, and the posture was elephant-like. But these statues marked the world's first full-scale dinosaur models, igniting public fascination. Early 20th century art, like Heinrich Harder's 1910, here that were wild cards, carried that image to millions. In film, Iguanodon reached a new generation through Disney's Dinosaur, starring Aladar with a companion attraction at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Beyond that, popular media has used Iguanodon as a barometer of changing science, from the Victorian quadruped with a nasal horn to a rigid tail prop biped, to today's more agile, dynamic animal that could shift from two legs to four. Within the Jurassic canon, Iguanodon has had a quieter but notable presence. A Fallen Kingdom appearance was discussed but ultimately cut, while later media and tie-ins place Iguanodon on screen in the Dominion film, often amid herds of contemporaries, sometimes dodging apex predators. Creative sequences occasionally compress time, portraying Iguanodon alongside species it never met in life. While not strictly accurate, these moments spotlight its role as a signature Cretaceous herbivore in the franchise's living world. Gaming kept the spotlight bright, a Wanadon shows up across the Jurassic titles, an unlockable or event creature in Jurassic Park 3, Park Builder, Jurassic World The Game, and Jurassic World Alive, a planned but cut entry in Operation Genesis, a full addition to Jurassic World Evolution, and a base game presence in Evolution 2, later receiving a Dominion-inspired skin in Variant. Outside entertainment, even the asteroid 9941 a Wanadon carries its name Skyward a quiet tribute to a dinosaur that helped launch paleontology. For our team across the Jurassic World destinations, Iwanodon represents clarity through time, a species that mirrors the evolution of public understanding itself. It's iconic, scientifically rich, and perfect for immersive herd exhibits that welcome guests into the Cretaceous. With its cultural legacy set and its science refined, we now turn from screen to street, into the exhibit itself. Join us as we reveal how we've engineered Iwanodon's habitat for guest safety, animal welfare, and unforgettable viewing across our parks. From San Diego and Manchester to Cascadia, Creta, and Sanctuary. Welcome to the Wild and Wetlands, an immersive habitat designed to capture the floodplains of early Cretaceous Europe. More than just a paddock, this exhibit is a living landscape where Iguanodon herds thrive under the guiding principles of animal welfare, guest experience, and paleontological authenticity. At its core, the design emphasizes choice and complexity. A well-designed exhibit allows the dinosaurs to remove themselves from situations they find stressful, with the freedom to move between sun and shade, hot and cold, high and low, wet and dry. This complexity not just the size of the habitat ensures that dinosaurs can express natural behaviors while maintaining a sense of security and comfort, promoting both behavioral and psychological health. 
The habitat zones reflect these priorities. Racing meadows provide open spaces for herd movements and cooperative foraging. Wetland spine offers shallow waters and reed beds for cooling, wading, and dynamic travel routes. Conifer rice and flint outcrop deliver both elevated browse and secluded resting zones. And a dedicated separation zone, screen from guest views, doubles as a retreat for individuals while discreetly serving as a safe space point for ranger teams and veterinary staff. Working alongside our paleobotanical teams, landscape designers populated the habitat with autechnic flora. From cycads and ferns to carefully selected conifers, heavily planning choice both enriches the animals' daily routines and transports guests back to the wielding landscapes of 125 million years ago. As cycads representing Wadadon's primary food source, they have been intentionally planted alongside popular viewing areas, ensuring that guests often witness a herd browsing naturally at close range. For visitors, the design layers multiple viewing experiences. The main gallery features sheeted decks and reinforced acrylic walls, providing panoramic views of the herd at rest or in motion. A unique log gallery, styled as a massive hollowed-out tree trunk, allows guests to step inside and observe the dinosaurs through car viewing windows, a truly immersive theme encounter. Elevated boardwalks and recessed blinds further ensure that each vantage point reveals a different moment in the herd's story without ever overwhelming the dinosaurs. This exhibit also reflects Jurassic World's newest expansion initiative. Guests may still notice the marks of progress, freshly planted groves, the distant hum of construction equipment, and the unmistakable atmosphere of innovation as our parks continue to grow. Of course, the Wealdon Wetlands is not unique to one set alone. You can encounter this remarkable dinosaur at one of our world-class Jurassic World destinations. From the original park on Isla Nublar to our newest expansion in the Olympic Peninsula at Jurassic World Cascadia, discover ancient wonders in the Dolomite mountain range and the Jurassic World Sanctuary, or meet these living legends in San Diego, Manchester, or Crete.